Hey everyone and welcome to this video on Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile, also known as KMM. In this tutorial, we'll dive into the world of KMM and explore how it can help you develop mobile apps that share code between Android and iOS. This tutorial is geared towards developers who have some experience with Kotlin. If you want to upgrade your knowledge on Kotlin, do consider subscribing to our app whose link is there in the description box below. Our app is designed specifically for beginners with easy to understand explanations, step-by-step -step tutorials that break complex concepts into manageable chunks. No prior coding experience is required. This video will also help you get started with building cross-platform mobile apps. You'll be able to improve code reusability and development efficiency. What softwares you'll need? Here's a breakdown of how Windows and Mac users can develop KMM apps. Windows users with Android Studio can develop and build Android apps using KMM. But here's a small list of what you'll need. First is Android Studio. Download and install the latest version of Android Studio. Second is Kotlin, which comes bundled with Android Studio. These two steps are also applicable to Mac users. Mac users have the advantage of building for both Android and iOS apps with Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. However, developing for iOS requires Apple's Xcode IDE. You can download and install it from the Mac App Store. What folder structure KMM follows? First is Shared Folder Module. In Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile, the Shared Folder, also referred to as Common Module, is a central directory code that can be used on both Android and iOS. It's the heart of code reusability in KMM. Here's a breakdown of the shared folder's role. Number one is common code base. This folder holds the Kotlin code that can be executed both on Android and iOS. It typically includes things like data class known as models and struct in Swift. Business logic. These are the features that the app would have. Networking, utilities, your code for making API calls. Number two is platform independence. The code in the shared folder is written in a way that avoids platform specific functionalities. This allows it to compile and run on both Android and iOS with minimal changes. Android app module. This is the second module. This module represents your Android application code and it is very typical of Android project that you would see in Android Studio. For example, it will have main activity, manifest and resources. And the last module in the folder structure is our iOS app module. This module represents your iOS application code. It's not a standard Xcode project, but rather an Xcode configuration within the KMM. I call it Xcode configuration because we can open this module with Xcode and make changes to our iOS app. Let's understand this with a simple code demonstration. But before we dive in, I want you to make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos. Hit that like button and subscribe to the Programming Hub channel for more technical content. Hit the notification bell too, so you will be the first to know when a new video drops. In this section, I'm going to show to you how you can download Android Studio and as well as how you can configure your Kotlin multi-platform environment. In order to download Android Studio, you just have to head towards developerandroid.com and from here, you'll be able to get the latest version of Android Studio. Next is, you have to go to the terminal and run your command kdoctor once the Android Studio installation is complete. This will give you the list of all the things that you'll need in order to have a proper KMM setup. For example, when I just run kdoctor, you'll see that I have my Java setup, my Android Studio setup and Xcode setup been completed. Hence, I can get green ticks against them. Now, heading over to Android Studio, I'm going to click on plugins and inside marketplace, I'm going to search for Kotlin multi-platform. So this is going to be the plugin that you'll need in order to have 
all the things for Kotlin multi-platform getting started. Next, I'll head over to projects, click on new project and click on Kotlin multi-platform library, my application KMM, that is going to be the name of my project. And then I'm going to click on next, have this shared module and then click on finish. Once this entire process for Gradle is complete, you'll get a raw entire project from KMM on your laptop and you'll be able to run this on your Android emulator. And if you're using a Mac, you'll be able to run it also on iOS simulator. Now, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of all the folder structures that is going to be there inside this shared directory. Now, what you'll notice there is a lot many structures of folders that goes behind Android main, common main and iOS main. In fact, when it comes to Android main and iOS main, you'll see one thing as platform Android KT file. This otherwise is going to be the build gradle file that you usually see on any Android project. Now, what I'll do Head over to this Android directory and open this platform.kt file. Well, this is an expect keyword that exactly resembles an abstract class from Kotlin. So you'll notice that this platform function is going to be basically get implemented on this class as well as this Android class. Now, what I shall be doing is trying to run this code into my app and see how the exact outlook for this entire app looks like. What I'm going to do is, as I open my Android app, this is going to be the regular folder structure that you'll see in any Android app. For example, it has got main activity and let me switch to the code tab. So, as you know, Activities are specific to Android and iOS has nothing to do with it. Repeat, and iOS has nothing to do with it. Similarly, this is the manifest file over where you have Android specific declarations. On the other hand, when it comes to iOS, you have this info P list as well as the entire Swift code that goes behind your entire iOS app. But what is going to be the most interesting is how your entire KMM can actually give you two native apps in Android and iOS with the help of this shared folder. When it comes to the shared folder, you'll notice that there is this platform which kind of has got this interface and this you can expect a similar syntax like abstract classes in Java, which exists in my Kotlin multi-platform. However, this is very specific to KMM. As I open this particular Android main and this particular iOS main, you'll notice that both of my classes implement this platform and they have got this one string. In fact, I should be going to this Android and you'll notice that when I run my app, you'll be able to get the Android version as well as the SDK version, which I'm using right now in my app. I'm going to wait until this Gradle build finishes creating an APK that will get installed in my emulator. And as you see at the top corner, there is an hello Android being written. What I'm going to do is this platform, I'm going to slightly tweak it to show into our user interface. I'll go to the shared directory and put over here val channel name and I'll put this as a string. So basically, I'm trying to introduce one more variable into my interface. Next, I'll go to my Android directory. It gives me an error that clearly indicates that when it comes to an abstract class or an interface, we have the declaration being done of what goes behind the name variable, but we haven't done 
for the channel name. Hence, I'll go over here, implement the channel name. In fact, I can just do command D here, change this to channel name. And over here, I'll put this as programming hub Android. Now, let's try to run the code after I do some changes in my main activity. Now, in my Android app, inside my Java directory, we have this main activity where you'll notice it's calling this greet function. What I'm going to do is below this function, I'm going to copy and paste and display my channel name which is platform dot channel name. What you notice is this again is a greeting file. And if I keep my mouse on this, you'll notice this particular greeting file is actually residing in my common main, which is a common directory between my Android code and an iOS code. The functions which I put up in this greeting class are going to be accessible from both Android and iOS. Now, in my main activity, what I'll try and do is remove this and remove the parameter and keep two variables. First, that is going to give me the greet and second, that is going to give me display channel name. Since I'm going to do it in compose, I'm going to use a column and fill max size. So this I'm going to display at the center of the screen. One text, which is this first below that it would be yet another text as second. So it will show me the greeting as well as the channel name, which is Android. Now I'm going to run my app. And it tells me that I've got an error here. That's because I did not remove the parameter here. Well, I can remove it and rerun my app. And what do you notice is this column which shows Hello Programming Hub Android. Now, this is kind of a proof that my code ran well in my Android environment. Let's try to repeat the steps wherein what I'm going to do is this iOS app, the Xcode project directory, I'm going to click on open in Xcode. Well, this step is optional to Windows. That's because when you're trying to do this entire implementation on Windows, you probably would not be able to run it on an iOS simulator. Since I'm using a Mac, I'm going to show to you in both the environments. And if you are using a Mac, you can try on both environments as well. What I'll do is copy this line, paste it here, change this to display channel name. And then I'll just command D on this, copy paste this variable. Now for channel name, I'm going to head over to my common class. Do you remember that over here in my shared directory, we also have to write the code for our channel name variable. Over here, I'm going to switch to this channel name string. This time, I'll put hello programming hub and iOS development. So this variable shall be picked up from here and then getting displayed on my iOS. Now, what I'll try and do is going to my greeting class, I'll copy the function name and paste it here. And then 
what i'll try and do just go to my device manager stop my emulator and run the same example in simulator in this directory i'll switch to all configuration ios app and simply hit the run button what this will do is will run the entire shared folder code into my simulator so that i can have the exact same code base for android and ios let's try and see if that happens or not what i can notice is the simulator showing up that's my hello text along with ios app development just ignore that it shows two times hello that's because i forgot to remove from this platform this particular hello which is there on the ui for example when it comes to the ui you have to ensure that this hello in your storyboard is not repeated twice we hope you like the content for the demonstration but did you notice that i had to write the code twice for android and ios in the upcoming week i'm going to show to you how you can use compose to write code for ui only once share this video with your friends family and anyone else who might benefit from learning about coding and development together we can spread knowledge and empower more minds to join the coding community happy coding